All right, there we go. Now we're live. Happy New Year. <laughs> New Year's in July. Wow. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to be 117 this week. And it's today, I think we're 106, maybe, which that's reasonable. But yeah, I just saw 117. So I think it's cool weather. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on, everyone. Yes, we got, oh, Happy New Year. Yes, Happy New Year. <laughs> In a little while, I'll tell you about our crazy theme that Madeline and I came up with and how we came up with it. But we're excited about today. We're excited you're all here. So come on in, everybody. <laughs> um, I'm Joan Burge, founder and CEO of Office Dynamics International. And in case you don't know about us, we are the global leader in the development and presentation of sophisticated training programs and information for administrative office professionals. And we've been doing this for 33 years. Woohoo! <laughs> Woo Happy New Year to that. Happy New Year. <laughs> so I am, like I said, so excited about Madeline, and I will introduce her in just a few moments. We're just going to go through a few logistics in case you haven't been on our webinars before. The educational part of the program is 40 to 45 minutes, and then we're going to have Q&A. So this is your opportunity to ask Madeline career questions and anything related to what she's going to talk about. Um, you can submit your questions anytime throughout the webinar or you can save them to the end if you would like. And this is a conversational webinar. So we're just gonna have fun and Madeline is going to provide you with tons of great advice. So let me tell you how we came up with this idea. I think we were just brainstorming and talking about uh, the topics that Madeline was going to cover. And we were also talking about how fast this year is going. And we just said that again before you, know, you all came on. And we were saying, here it is. It's, you know, June, July. And before you know it, it's going to be the Christmas and the new year. So we were thinking about, wow, okay, we've got six months left to make our dreams or goals come true, whatever we set out for the rest of this year. And if we don't have any plans yet for the rest of this year, you know, you're just kind of floating around like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed already. I can't think of any more ideas for this year. Madeline is going to kickstart, get you kickstarted and get you pumped up and excited and guide you on how to have a vision for the rest of this year and actually how to move forward and activate it. So I'm not going to say much more because she's got it all together for you. So let me tell you a little bit about Madeline because, oh, she's so interesting. We could even just talk about her career for a while. <laughs> I'm like amazed. So the road to career success and happiness starts with having big dreams. Today's speaker, Madeline, dreamed of scientific discoveries, working on Broadway and saving the world. All of those big dreams have come true. Madeline Mackey is a published biochemistry researcher, has worked at four Tony Award winning theaters and responded to disasters all over the country as an officer with the American Red Cross. Ladies and gentlemen, here to help us activate our own career dreams, please join me in welcoming Madeline Mackey. Woohoo! Hello, everyone. Yay. I see some familiar names and old friends from past conferences. Hello, everyone, and Happy New Year in July. <laughs> oh, we're so crazy. Okay, I love it. All right. Well, Madeline, I know, number one, I believe you had said, I, I took notes when we talked, and you were saying we have to start with our why, correct? Yeah. Why? Why should we stop and pause and make a career plan in July? Because for the last three years, how many of you can agree? The last three years, we've kind of been swept along with life and with our careers. And even maybe even before the pandemic, for some of you, your career just kind of happened to you. 
right? Did an executive tap you on the shoulder and said, hey, I'm moving over to this department. I want you to come with me. Or they called you on the phone and said, I'm at this company and I want you to join me here. So many times our career just happens to us and we have kind of no control over it. And that's not a bad thing, but imagine what could happen if you actually had a plan. So I'm going to give you three reasons as to why you should have a plan. So number one is people remember the last thing you did. So, right, a lot of us, the last thing you've done is what we remember the most. So you might have performance reviews coming up in a couple of months. In six months, you're going to have to sit down with your supervisor and say, all right, here's what I did for the year. And that information is going to determine if you're going to get a raise, if you're going to be considered for opportunities. Even for some people, it might even consider, are you going to be able to keep your job? So taking the time now to say, okay, I let this, the past six months, this January through June just kind of happened, but I'm going to take a minute to pause and figure out what do I want to accomplish by the end of the year. So that's the first reason. That's your first why is people remember the last thing you did. So you want to make sure that when your performance reviews come around, that the things you did were great. And I love that Susan is saying, hey, mid-year performance reviews are this week. Exactly. So let's figure out, here's what I've done in the past six months, but what are you going to accomplish in the next six months? So strategy number two, or your why number two, is you are planting seeds for future opportunities. So there are things you are going to want to do next year or at the end of this year. Maybe you want to go to the Conference for Administrative Excellence sponsored by Office Dynamics. That's their 30-year conference. And you're going to have to make a case for that. You're going to have to say, this is why the company should send me to this fabulous conference. Well, by having a career plan that includes a professional development element, then you can say, well, here are the things I'm going to learn at that conference that I'm going to bring back to the con bring back to the company and apply to the projects that we have coming up. So you are planting seeds for future opportunities. Maybe there's some leadership opportunities that you want to take advantage of. Maybe there's programs at your company that you want to consider. Maybe you want to go back to school in September. And so you need to have that plan in place. So that's number two. You are planting seeds for future opportunities. And number three, your number three, your why, and I think this is the biggest one and the most important one. Have you ever had a big event coming up? Maybe a wedding, a family reunion, or a really big trip that you wanted to take. And you said, oh, before this trip, I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to lose some weight so I look good in my dress or I look good in my swimsuit on the beach. I'm going to get healthy and drop a size, right? Anyone ever done that? And then you make that promise to yourself and you don't follow through. You don't execute. You don't activate. And then six months later, the event happens, the vacation happens, and you see the photos and you go, oh my goodness, Oh my goodness, why did I not make a plan and get healthy? I see people in the chat, Karen and Heather and Shirley, Dredra, Holly. So Holly's like, I'm doing it right now, right now. <laughs> Tina's like, every single time, yes. And you're like, and you look at the pictures and you're like, why did I not go for some walks? Why did I not cut back on the cheesecake? I regret it now. Think about what you want to say to yourself in January of 2024. Do you want to say, wow, I got a new certification. Wow, I learned a lot of things at the Office Dynamics Conference. Wow, I did some really great projects and I'm so proud of myself. Or do you want to say, 
I really wish I had started my career plan in July so that I could have something that I'm really proud of here in January of 24. So that's your third reason. So that when you get to the end of the year, because we all do end of the year reflection, right? We all sit there on December 31st and you reflect back on the year or we hide from it. You know, we put our heads in the sand and say, I don't want to think about what happened last year. But wouldn't it be nice if you could look back on it and say, I have no regrets. I did some amazing, amazing things in 2023. And it's not too late. There are 174 days until New Year's, 24 weeks. You've got plenty of time to activate your career plan. Wow. Wow. I wrote all those reasons down. I love all of them. Um, and I'm, I'm a firm believer um, in starting with the why, you yeah. know, like you did, right? Because we have to have that, that reason, I feel like, before I can actually then take the next steps as to what to do. So um, I know you had explained to me vision was the second step. Yeah. Correct. So there's three steps. So you, that's our why. We've got three whys of why we should do this. So with the three whys, how do we do it? How do we activate your career dreams? Write these three ways down. Number one, you create. Number two, you cultivate. And number three, you activate. We need to create a vision of where we want to go. We need to cultivate the resources once we know where we want to go. And then we need to activate. We need to make it happen. And see, in that example that I gave you about the no regrets and the vacation and the event, see, we create a vision of what we want. But sometimes we don't follow through and get the resources and we don't get the, we don't activate. But today you're going to learn how to do all three of those things. So let's talk about creating a vision, right? A lot of us in New Year's, on New Year's, that first week in January, people make a vision board. People get their magazines together and they start cutting out pictures. And we say, I'm going to have a clean house. We say, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to improve my relationships. I'm going to practice yoga. I'm going to get into meditation. I'm going to save money. I'm going to pay off my debt. Anybody ever make these New Year's resolutions? Tell me in the chat, right? You create a vision of what you're going to do. What I want you to do for your career is make a vision of what you want your career to look like in the next 12 to 18 months. Where do you want to be with your career? And I'm going to ask you some questions. And don't worry, I'm going to rattle off these questions. But at the end of today's webinar, you are going to get a list of resources with all of these tools that I'm referring to. So do not panic. You don't have to try to write down every single question. But when you are creating a vision of your career, I want you to think about what kind of company do you want to work for? What kind of values does that company have? How big is the company? What industry is it in? Are you working from home? Are you going into an office? Is it a hybrid model? So what is the vision of the company? So that's the first thing. And you may say, I'm already working at that company. I love the company that I work for. I love the values. I love the culture. I have the environment. So that's great. But if you don't, find a quiet place. Get your favorite adult beverage or um, hot beverage. Put on your crown if you need to. <laughs> and write down what does that company look like. And then I love what Sheila says. She said, new job, new boss. New boss is a big thing for some people because a lot of individuals say, I didn't quit my job. I quit my manager. I quit my supervisor. I quit my executive. So as you're writing this vision, I want you to write down the characteristics of your ideal supervisor, your ideal executive, or the ideal team you want to be supporting. So I want you to think about that. Like, do you care if the executive that you are supporting is male or female? Are they older or younger than you? Are they in the office or do you have a remote relationship? 
what is their communication style? I'll tell you about a boss I had and their communication style drove me nuts. They did not like email. They did not want to ever use email. They didn't even open up their Outlook on their computer except like once or twice a week because they did not like to use email. So I would send her an email and eventually she would come and knock on my door and say, hey, Madeline, I saw your email about needing the account code for the lunch you had with the embassy. Can you tell me how that lunch went and what you discussed and what was the agenda? What's your plans for the future with them? How the partnership is going to shake out? And I'd be like, yes, I can tell you that during our weekly meeting. But right now I just need the account code so I can file my expense report so I can get my money back. But she hated email. And that was really frustrating for me because all of that information would also be in an email to her. So think about what's the communication style of that executive that you're supporting. Do they email? Is it text message? Do you meet with them once a week or as needed? Um, How do they include you as part of that executive team? See, go deep really spend some time thinking about that relationship because we all know that is the most important relationship to an executive assistant. And then the final part of your vision is you. What responsibilities are do you have? What kind of work are you doing? And for that, what I want you to do is I want to write, I want you to write out or vision board your daily schedule and get deep into the minutia with it. What time do you wake up? What do you wake up to? Is it an alarm? Is it, is it music? What do you do when you first wake up? Do you meditate? Do you take a walk? Do you have breakfast? Like, I know some of you are saying, I don't have time to do that. I wake up and I have to jump on email right away. But we're talking about your ideal day, your dream day. So I want you to walk through that day. What time do you go into the office? Who are you talking to? What type of projects are you working on? What software are you using? Some of you are Excel gurus. You love Excel. You love PowerPoint. Maybe you love designing flyers and things in Canva. And if you could do that all day long, that would make you so happy. So write that down in your ideal job description. And then after you have that ideal job description, you've now created this vision. You have a vision of, here's the type of company I want to work for. Here's the kind of supervisor and team that I'm supporting. And here are the things that I am doing. And exactly, Donna, you are now going to manifest it. Because when you write it all down, it becomes real. You can see it. You can touch it. Sometimes I could even smell it because I wrote down exactly what I was having for breakfast in the morning. And I was like, oh, that sounds so good. That sounds so much better than the the crackers that I find in the bottom of my purse that I sometimes shove in my mouth as I'm driving to work. Oh, wouldn't it be nice if I could have a nice parfait with, with yogurt and blueberries and granola and a nice cup of hot tea with pretty music playing? I could smell it. So when you do that, you are activating the law of attraction. You are saying, this is the vision that I want. And just by writing it down, magical things might start to happen. Excellent. I'm looking at some of the um, comments in here about walking my dog, manifesting it that morning, you know, having that vision for your day. Um, I think a good question and I don't know, maybe it'll come out as we walk through too. So if, if it will, then just let me know. Um, I think visions is hard for some people. Like if they're not used to doing that or, you know, we're so caught up in the day to day to day and just getting done, it becomes kind of a grind. Yeah. Um, what, what can someone do? Because you know, some people I feel are natural visionaries, you know, things just kind of pop up and other people, they're just kind of very much in the now in the moment. So do you have words of advice on how to like stimulate that within yourself? 
you know, and, and just get away from being like reacting to what's going on today. Cause with, I could see saying, I don't have time though to do that. And, or how do you get in? How does, would somebody get in that space? How do you get in the mood for it? So yeah. yeah, let's talk to the ones that are like, I don't have time. Not only do I have work, I'm a wife, I'm a mother. Um, I have a spouse, significant other, there are children. So if that's okay, you don't have to spend hours doing this. Um, I did last year, I did it on an app on my phone. I put in vision board in my app store and I found an app that did a vision board. It had all the photos. It, all I had to do was wow. pick the photos. It asked me the questions and it was like, pick a photo of, um, what kind of vacations do you want? Boom. What do you house? What do you want your house to look like? Boom. So May, there may be some apps there and I'm going to give you a tool that answers that all you have to do is answer these questions. And so you don't have to do a vision board. If you're not a visionary, don't do a vision board, type it out. Um, some of you again are Excel gurus. I, when I was deciding to leave the red cross and go work for myself and start my career coaching business, I did an Excel sheet because I loved using Excel sheet. So I made my whole plan in my Excel sheet or just talk. Just turn on the recorder on your phone and say, here's, answer those questions. Have those questions that I'm going to send you at the end of this and just answer those questions. Saying something out loud of, wow, I wish I could wake up at nine o'clock. I wish I could sleep till nine. I wish I could wake up and exercise first. I wish I didn't have to go to work till noon. Just, just put it out there. Yeah, that's really good. And I see everybody's responding. I like the idea, like you said, everybody's different how they do it. I'm definitely one to sketch, draw things out. Even though I'm not an artist, I can't draw, you know, but I'll do the best I can. And I just to get it down, envision it or what works for me too is it's great if I have magazines and things and yeah. I can cut out pictures of things that I see or maybe on the internet, there's something, a trip or cruise I want to take and print that and cut it. I, I know that really helps. And it feels like if I could just, yeah, get started and take that couple minutes, I'm like, Oh, okay. You know, so, yeah. um, I love yeah. in the chat. Someone said she used chat GPT to get started. Thank you, Maureen. She says my supervisor and I recently did a vision statement and plan for a team. Oh, wow. It, it was hard to get started. So I used chat GPT. It wasn't perfect, but it got words on the paper. So you can tell chat BT, write me a vision plan that includes a, B, C, and D, the three things that are most important to me. Start with three things. Hey, let's not let's not make this difficult. Start with the top three things you would change right now about your career. That's your vision. This is so interesting. Sorry, I'm looking at it. Again, people are saying like uh, Martha has I take pictures on my iPhone. That's a great idea, right? I didn't realize so many people use apps um very cool to see the different tools people are using right mm -hmm. i love that um someone says i where did it go uh oh she chose as a feeling thank you diane diane says i chose a feeling of how do i want to feel um at the end of the year yeah wow this, this is your vision this isn't mine this isn't jones this is your vision so come up with what what is it that you want Cool. All right. And I know we could go on and on and there may be questions later about that, but let's go on. What's the next step? I want to make sure we get all your yes, steps. All three steps. The second step is you got to cultivate the resources, right? Now you know where you want to go and now you have to figure out what do I need to get there? So here's a big tool that I recommend for everyone. Go find the job you want next. Okay. So whether it's at your current company, maybe you're an executive assistant, you want to be a chief of staff, or maybe you want to leave the company, I want you to start looking at job boards. And I want you to find one or two jobs of the type of job that you're seeking, just one or two. And then what you're going to do is you're going to do a little exercise, you're going to copy and paste it into Microsoft Word or to Google Docs. Then you're going to go through that job description line by line, and I want you to highlight all the things you know how to do in green. 
So everything you know how to do, highlight that in green. Everything you need to learn that you're like, I don't know how to do that, or I'm not familiar with that, you highlight in yellow. So what you're doing is a skills assessment and a gap analysis. You're getting visual of what you already know how to do and what are the things you need to learn. Then to cultivate the resources, because that's what we're talking about now. We're talking about how do I get to where I want to get? You have the job description. You know this is where you want to get. You know that there's some things you need to learn. So then the things you highlighted in yellow, the things that you said, I don't know how to do that. Now you have to figure out where do I go to learn those things? Maybe you want to get better at um, some Microsoft software, right? You're like, I want to get better at this Microsoft software. So then you can figure out, okay, well, where can I go to learn it? Can I go to Office Dynamics to learn it? Can I go to the Microsoft Help Center to learn it? Do they have tutorials and training? A lot of us, we all know where we go to learn things. We go to YouTube University to learn something, right? We go to YouTube University, and I swear you could get a master's degree and almost a PhD from YouTube University. So start with one thing. Just one, like I don't, if there's 10 things that you have highlighted in yellow on that job description, do not plan on learning 10 things yet. Start learning one thing and say, here's what I want to learn. Maybe you want to get your project management certification or you want to get an event management certification. Then that's what you focus on. I see in the chat, some people are saying, I go to LinkedIn, LinkedIn Learning. You can go get LinkedIn Learning to learn things. You can go to Coursera. You can go to Udemy.com. So many places to go learn things, but you're going to learn one thing. Now, what are some other resources you might need to learn that? Maybe you've decided, I want to go back to school. I want to get a degree. I want to get my first degree. I want to get my second, third, fourth, fifth degree. Maybe that's your thing. But you're like, how am I going to pay for it? So you got to go find the resources for that. Maybe you talk to your supervisor and say, hey, how can I um, take advantage of the tuition reimburse reimbursement program? Will the organization pay for me to go learn this? And the other thing you might need is a mentor, someone to help you navigate this path to get to the next level. People are the most important tools in your career. Tell me in the chat how many of you found your current position, not through a job board, but through someone you knew someone that reached out to you and said, here's a great opportunity for you. Someone that called you on the phone and said, I think you should look at this. The biggest contract I ever got in my business was someone sent it to me at an email. Um, she wasn't even a client. She just someone that followed me on LinkedIn and she reached out to me. The people you know, the people on this call, I love that people are putting in the chat their LinkedIn URLs and saying, hey, let's connect. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the best tool you can have in your network to grow your career. I'm seeing people are saying, yes, someone sent me the yeah. job description. Yes, a referral. Someone I work for it. My best friend told me about it. My mom referred me. I love that. I, my best favorite, how did you find a job story was one of my clients was mowing the lawn. He unfortunately had just got laid off from his position. He was out mowing the lawn in the middle of the day, in the middle of the week. And his neighbor came out and was like, John, what are you doing home in the middle of the week? Why aren't you at work? And he says, oh, well, unfortunately, um, my company restructured and I'm looking for work now. And his neighbor goes, well, tell me what you're looking for. And John says, well, I'd like to work for one of the big companies. And his neighbor goes, oh, I know somebody at Facebook. Do you want to work at Facebook? And John's like, sure, I'd be happy to work at Facebook. And his neighbor goes, well, send me your resume and I'll send it to Cheryl. And John's like, Cheryl, who at Facebook? Oh. And his neighbor says, 
Oh, Cheryl Sandberg, the COO of Facebook. She used to be my babysitter. Oh, gosh. Oh, right? that's crazy. Right? <laughs> the, the people you know are the best tools. Everyone asked me, how did I go from the lab to the stage to the C-suite of an international nonprofit? It was through my network. HR told me when they received my resume that eight people walked my resume into her office, including the CEO. Wow. And when she looked at my resume, I was not qualified for the position. She said, you have no experience in project management, program management, exact disaster response, external relations, community preparedness, volunteer <laughs> management, grant management. She says, you have no experience. But because one of the people that walked your resume into my office is the CEO, what time would you like to have an interview? Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, well, I I agree 100% um, with that. I know, oh my gosh, in our, our trainings for 33 years, you know, I've encouraged the, the networking piece. Um, and really quick, I think what's interesting, and I, I don't want to go off on a tangent with this, but it's to me, it's worth mentioning, is um, because of what's happened the last few years, people maybe aren't, avidly networking and getting out there. I mean, if they're, because maybe they're not out and about as much, um, they're working from their homes, they're working hybrid, or they're at the coffee shop doing their work, or they're somewhere, you know, yeah. doing that. And um, oh, what, there was something I recently heard, oh, that, oh, it actually happened at our Enlighten event that there were a few people who were had written and said they were very uncomfortable networking in the networking room and um i thought wow that that's really interesting like we yeah. shouldn't be afraid of that you know by now we've been doing this for three years and uh so I, could you speak to that a moment because the the visibility like during my career too really quickly the 20 years i worked in offices <laughs> about and about i was seen and people referred me because they saw what i did yep right i've seen you in action i've seen you be that awesome assistant i see how you carry yourself i see how you talk how you walk how you handle stress so you know we have this void now and so to me if there's not intentionality and putting yourself out there because I know building my networks and having all these networks available to me over all these years, like you said, that's your greatest asset. And even if they can't help you, they have a huge network. Yeah. So can you take a moment to like talk? I think this is an important topic. Um, and I've even thought about a webinar on getting comfortable with this. Like we shouldn't, you know, because to me, it's not, maybe in networking we got to change up our words to like yes. it's about building relationships and rapport maybe when people have networking they they draw back so can you speak to that a little bit absolutely not all of us are like sandy who says i can talk to almost anyone there are no strangers in the room to sandy but for some of us we're introverted and it's we're not comfortable walking into a room and trying to sell ourselves, right? Because that's what people think networking is. And I love what you said, Joan. Stop thinking of it as selling yourself. Think of it as building a relationship. So I use this magical networking phrase. If you're going someplace, like if you are going to the Office Dynamics mm -hmm. Conference, if you're going to that and you go into the networking room, what, what could you say to break the ice? So it's a simple question. It's three words. How are you? Simple as that. Start the conversation with someone. Hi, how are you? How are you enjoying the conference? And let them talk and listen. It's as simple as that because after they ask the question, after you ask the question and they answer it, they're going to stop talking and say, well, how are you? How are you liking the conference? And then you can say, I love it. It's great. I really like learning about this. So don't think of networking as selling yourself or trying to get a job. Instead, think of it as, I want to learn about this person. I want to learn about their background. And 
then I'll share if they're interested in learning, if they are interested, see, that's the key. If they're interested in learning about me, they will ask and I will talk to them. Mm -hmm. So I like to say, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me your story. Tell me what brought you here today. See, I put the focus on the person and you'll be able to tell because if they're like, oh, my boss made me come and, and, and they're just not giving you anything, well, you just say, well, enjoy your day and you can go on to the next person because you're not trying to get to know everybody in the room. You're just trying to get to know one or two key people. So if you have four or five conversations and two of them went really well, you've done a great job. So don't let it overwhelm you. Also, a lot of people are still doing virtual events. I love virtual events. When I go to an event, I will sit there on the call and for the participants in the room, I will connect, I'll reach out to them on LinkedIn. I can see their name in the participant list and I'll say, hey, I see we're both attending the XYZ event, let's connect. Now, do I let everyone into my LinkedIn network? Not necessarily. Now, I am a content creator, so I do have a big LinkedIn network and I put my LinkedIn URL in the chat for everyone. But if someone reaches out to me to connect, I look at their profile. I read about them. I see, are we in the same industry? Do we have people in common? Is there some mutual benefits to the two of us? Do they have information that I'd like to see in my newsfeed? And can I share information with them? So networking is really just about let's get to know each other. And we, there may not be anything I can do for you right now or anything you can do for me right now. But by us getting to know each other, things happen in the future. It's why I'm here today. I have been following, Joan and I have been connected on LinkedIn for years, for many, many years. And it wasn't until last year, I think, that she said, oh, I have this spot in my conference. Um, would you like to come and present at the event? So it took time, she had to get to know me. There's an old sales, um, uh, adage that says people buy or people are in relationship with those who they know, like, and trust. So give people time to get to know you, to like you, and to trust you. And then resources, opportunities will come your way and you will be able to share the same thing with them because you will know, like, and trust them. Great. Thank you. That's perfect. Wonderful. I mean, and we could talk about that, I know, for quite a while. Um, that's a different, another another topic, right? The, um, oh, what I wanted to ask you really quick before we go on to activate, because I'm watching our time and I know you've got to get to that. Um, really quick, if, if someone on is not actually looking for a job, I'm assuming, though, that's still an activity they could do to identify uh, their skills and growth, uh, their gap areas, like the activity you said about looking for that ideal job and then measuring yourself. Exactly. Okay. If, you're, if you're in a current role, there's we, we should be lifelong loaners, right? Everybody, and you know this is as executive assistants, as professional admins, technology is always changing. So to you should spend some time learning about what's new, what's out there. Like I have a lot of my staff, my entire staff, I've made them attend webinars on chat GPT because I'm like, do I want you to use this to write a resume? No, but I want you to understand this technology. I want you to see the benefits and the downfalls from it because it is a useful tool um, to help you do certain things. So spend some time learning, talk to your other EAs and say, what new technology are you using? Um, how are you being more productive and more efficient? So even if you love your job, you love your boss, you love your company, you should be a lifelong learner and plan to learn one or two things new every single year. All right. Wonderful. Now we got to get to activate, right? Activate. <laughs> 
Let's activate. Okay. This is important. All right, here we go. It's You've got a vision of where you want to go. You know what you need to learn to get there. You know the people you need to help you get there. Now, what do you do with this? This is like those of us that sign up for Weight Watchers, right? Or we sign up for a diet program. We're like, okay, I want to lose the weight to look good on the vacation. Um, the resource I need is I'm going to sign up for a nutrition program. I'm going to get a nutrition coach. you got to go to the meetings. You got, you got to show up. You got to activate. And the only way, come on, admins, what's the one thing we used? If, if it's not there, we don't do it. The calendar. The secret to activating is putting it on the calendar. So if there's something you want to learn, put on your calendar Friday at 2, 2 p.m., the learning hour learn write it down if it's not on the calendar it does not happen so set aside time again we don't have to set aside every single day 20 minutes a week that you're gonna sit down and you're gonna learn something set a smart goal I'm gonna go to one networking event whether it's live or virtual I'm gonna go to one networking event a month or every other month. You don't have to go every month. Every other month. Every other month, if you do that for a year, you've gone to six networking events. And if at those six networking events, you met one person, that's six new people in your network that can help you activate your career. If you spend 20 minutes, 20 minutes times 52, that is 1,040 minutes. I'm going to divide that by 60. You just spent 17 hours learning something. Wow. 17 hours, just doing 20 minutes a week. So that's how you activate. You put it on the calendar. You make it a metric. You make it specific. And the last thing you do, this is this is the secret. This is the secret sauce you find an accountability partner. You find someone that wants to achieve something along with you. And you say, let's meet every week or every two weeks and we're gonna set goals and I'm gonna hold you accountable to your goal and you're gonna hold me accountable to my goal. I went to the gym. I have done a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, a triathlon, an Olympic triathlon, and a half Ironman race because, A, my training was on my calendar. Every morning I knew what I had to do for training. And number two, I had accountability partners. I never would have gotten as far as I had without my team behind me and supporting me. So that's the secret to activating. Yeah, the accountability partner is a really good idea. So I used to belong to... Um, Pre-COVID, for about four years, I belonged to a CEO group uh, here in Las Vegas, and they have several chapters all over the country. Well, they're international. It's called Vistage. And the reason I joined, because I wanted to have a local network of CEOs, business owners who I could, you know, be my support network and, and I could learn from and, you know, have that peer group. And once, once, a month we had to meet for a full day and it was grind out business eight to five just buckle down but what we had is though every quarter we were assigned accountability partners there were three of us and we had to meet with each other monthly on our own regular basis meet up and go through the goals that we had set for that quarter and share with each other and talk about, well, if you didn't do it, why didn't you do it? What are you waiting for? Get your butt in gear. You know, you can do this. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, and you know, they'd hold you to the ground and that was uncomfortable. Sometimes it was like you were embarrassed to show up at that, that meeting uh, that you had with each other and say, oh, whoa, I didn't achieve that. Well, I didn't do that. Well, I didn't do that. Uh oh, why not? <laughs> now, maybe it, it just business dictated it and things got busy. But I found it also then pulled you back on, oh, yeah, I remember I wanted to accomplish this. Yep. And I let a lot of other things pull me away and detract from me. Um, and then, you know, when you could share your success, it was always great, right? Because then they were there to say, wow, look at you nailed it. You did it. 
So I, they're very powerful. Um, and I, I think in all facets of our life to have somebody hold us accountable because, and that's hard because it could be embarrassing too, yeah. right? When we don't come through, but it's a good way of making us show up maybe when we don't feel like it. Yeah. And it makes you do it. Even if it's the night before, right? You know, you're meeting with your accountability tomorrow partner tomorrow. You're like, oh, I, I said I was going to do something. Let me go do it right quick. So <laughs> that I have something to report out. See, you're activating. You're yeah. activating. I love it. And it's great because they could give they give you advice too, right? Because they're sometimes we're so close to something we don't see that we get in our own way. You know, sometimes it isn't other things that get in our way. We get in our own way <laughs> with our thinking, right? Or our doubts or our excuses, you know? Yes, absolutely. Or they may give you a shortcut. They may say, oh, yeah. I, I, had, I was faced with that challenge. I used this and I got through it. And or they say something a different way and you go, yes. oh, I can do that. Yeah, that's having awesome. a sounding board and putting it out there makes it all the difference. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, I love it. As Mina's asking, where are our New Year gifts? You're so <laughs> cute, as me. <laughs> Boom! Perfect timing. I, they're coming. They're coming. <laughs> Hang on. So, I mean, we're going to do Q&A, then we're doing the giveaways. So you've got to bear with us. Um, but I, I think we could do one maybe giveaway right now just to keep them enticed and staying on. But we're saving some of them until after Q&A. <laughs> so I think the one we could tell everyone is the list of resources that you're going to provide to everyone. And can you tell them what about that? What is that you're going to be giving them? Absolutely. So <laughs> I just put in the chat the link to the resources that are going to be emailed to you. So what you're going to get is number one, you're going to get the 12 month uh, career journal prompt. So every day you can open it up. It takes 30 seconds. It's going to ask you a question and you answer that question. And if at the end of the year, you're going to have a year's worth of accomplishments and career prompts. I'm sending you the questions to activate your career dream, your vision. I'm sending you a career plan document for some of you who said, I have to go find a new job. That means you're going to need a resume. So I am sending you my traditional resume template. Um, it is the easiest to ever have to write your resume. I am sending you the LinkedIn scorecard. So we're talking about networking, connecting with people. I know some of you aren't putting your LinkedIn URL in the chat because you're like, I haven't looked at my LinkedIn profile since 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Sending you a LinkedIn scorecard to figure out where you're at. So go and look at all of those resources. You'll be able to download those and have a happy, happy new year in July, everybody. Wow. All right. All right. Very good. Well, we're not leaving yet, so don't sign off. All right. We got the questions, but thank you. First of all, those are fabulous, valuable, valuable gifts. So, um, all right, Malia, do we have questions? We do. Madeline, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. Um, okay, Miss Sarah would like to know, how do you get people to include you in those executive meetings? I've requested, but I have not yet been invited. Wow, that's a tough one. Uh, Joan, any thoughts on that? Oh, I've requested it, but I've not been invited. I, well, I guess my first question would be, because I would need more information in a way to answer that. You requested it. What was your request? Did you just ask, may I participate in those meetings or, oh, I would like to attend? Or did you actually put together a, a little presentation in a way of why you should be invited to them? Are you persuading them? Are you convincing them why you should be it? Are you showing them the return on the benefit of that? So if we just say, I think it would be great for me to sit in on those meetings and so I could be more in the conversation versus here is why I need to attend those monthly meetings. And I've got eight reasons why. So 
you know, like many things as an assistant, you have to be a salesperson. You have to persuade because they may not realize what, what's the point, you know, you've got other work to do. You don't need to be in on those meetings. So I would go back and I would seriously put together something more detailed if you just did a request. Totally agree. Put together a case study of here's what it is. And you may have to pick a specific meeting or project. Like they may be uncomfortable with you coming to every single meeting, but maybe you're in charge of the annual board meeting and you know that's on the agenda for that executive meeting. So you can say, I need to come to the, ex the executive meeting this month because we're talking about the board meeting. And since I'm the lead on that, there's some information I need and I have some questions about some things and it would make me more efficient to get those answers with everybody in the room together. So sometimes it's easier to take a small thing and then when they see the benefit they were like oh my gosh that was this was the best meeting we ever had and you were able to put resources in front of us and give us some tools and help us be more productive and efficient they they feel more comfortable and then also giving your giving your executive permission to tell you not this meeting some of the meetings you shouldn't be in. I know you're like, I'm part of the team. I need to know everything. But sometimes they need to discuss things that are confidential. So if you set it up that way, at first I want to come to this specific meeting, and then I'd like to come to the future ones after they see the benefit and give them permission to say, if there's ever something going on that's confidential, let me know and I won't attend. Excellent. Yes, that's excellent. Thank you for adding on to that, that detail that I think is really important. Okay, what's the next question? Okay, Deborah wants to know, how do you do your MYR when your manager is leaving in a, couple, a couple of months later? Your NYR, what is it? MYR? Mid-year review, I bet. Ah. I don't know, I guess, <laughs> right? Mid-year review, do you think that's it? I Let's think go right with that. Yeah. So you try to do it before they leave, you say, hey, can we put this, put some things in writing right now? Even if it's not the mid-year, you need to capture that information before they leave. So try to get them to say, hey, this is the one thing I need for you to do for me before you leave. Even if it's not official, for them to fill it out halfway and then because your new, your new executive may not know you, or you may not get a new executive for another two or three months. Hiring is very slow right now. Um, so you just try to get as much information as you can out of them. And then also talk about what is the next steps, if they're aware of it, of who are you going to be reporting to when they're no longer here. And building, you're going to have to quickly build a relationship with that person and go to them and say, here's what I've done for the past six months. Here's my plan for the future. Is there anything you need me to change as we start working together? Excellent. Oh, really quick. I have to give a shout out. Herminia Jones is on. Hi, Hermia. <laughs> She's here in the area. I haven't seen her in so long. Hi there. <laughs> okay, next question. <laughs> okay, Kathy wants to know, how would you deal with a boss that blames everything on you? I'm going to give the short answer. <laughs> the short answer is find a new boss. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kathy. Honestly, find a new boss. Um, Joan. <laughs> I don't, you know, that that's, I think, more than a two minute answer, you yeah. know, um, you know, and unfortunately that that happens and um, it, it seriously is more than a two minute answer um, because you, you really have to be very tactful in commun your communication and how you would respond to that, right? If you're blamed about something, it's, it's either, I see it as, you know, you could take the route of, well, I'm just going to show you all the facts and tell you why I'm not wrong or it's my fault which they could get very defensive about, right? And they're not going to be open. Or yet, you know, then there's that midline. You don't want to just sit there and take it. And then the third option I'm thinking, just think of this through Madeline, is it, it, you've got to be very strategic in what you would say and how you would say it 
that it doesn't fall on you kind of making them aware of what they're doing, but that's really delicate. Yeah, it really, I, I agree with you, Joan. It's a bigger, it's a bigger issue and a bigger strategy because you're going to have to come up with a whole strategy on how to address this, how to communicate this. Um, and we don't want to steer you down um, the wrong path. So yeah. hopefully maybe you'll win one of our three coaching sessions that we are raffling off and we can talk more in depth about this. Yes. Yes. And we will, we were going to do those in one minute. I think um, also if we go over five minutes, are you okay, Madeline? Yes. Or okay. But we, I'm going to try not to. Thank so, you. but I see everybody is really, really loving everything you're sharing with them. So um, let's see, I think we have time for one more question and then we do want to give away, Madeline has three coaching sessions uh, that she's, we're going to give away from Madeline today. So let's do one more question and then we can do that and then I'll do the wrap up. Okay. Uh, Tanya would like to know, how do you build the confidence you need to feel comfortable sharing your successes to show your worth and ability to advance in your career? Ah. Oh. That's a great one. That's a great one. So I think the more you do it, the better you're going to get. So maybe you don't have that conversation with your boss. Maybe you can have it with your mentor and say, I'd like to share with you my, my accomplishments for the year. Maybe you have it with another EA that you are comfortable talking to. Maybe you have it with a coach, right? You find a career coach or someone and say, can we practice me sharing my accomplishments? Practice, practice, practice saying it out loud. And again, do it at someone that's not as intimidating or stressful to you as it might be having that conversation with your supervisor. Sorry, I was just saying that thank you to everyone because they're just loving and saying thank, thanking you and I for this fabulous webinar. So I just decided to say thank you. <laughs> thank you for loving it. I'm glad we, we really hit home today. That's the important thing we always want to do. So Madeline is um, awarding or we're giving away three coaching sessions, right? And how long are the sessions? 45 minutes. So you get a 45 minute coaching session with me to talk about anything you want career related. So if you want to talk about your career vision, your career plan, a situation at work, you want me to review your resume or LinkedIn profile, we can do any of those one things in 45 minutes. Okay, great. And also very quick, because if anybody has to head off, how could they stay in touch or, you know, obviously where can they go? Um, to learn more, stay in touch with you or be able to access your resources. Absolutely. So I'm going to just simply, I'm going to drop my LinkedIn URL in the chat once again, and I'll tell you a little secret about LinkedIn. So I know when you get to my profile, it says follow, but if you click the, uh, the more button, if you click the more button, you will be able to send me an invitation to connect. So I just put my LinkedIn URL in the chat. You can absolutely follow me, but also right next to that follow button, you'll see the more button. Click that and that's how you'll be able to connect with me and you'll be able to send me LinkedIn messages and we can continue the conversation. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Now, who are our three winners, Malia? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Wait, I got to get ready. Okay. <laughs> the old acquaintance we forgot. <laughs> All right. We have Karen Lake, Sabrina, sorry if I mess this up, Chad, Chaddy, C H A D E E, Sabrina. Yes. And oh boy, Tudson T U D C I N Reyes. All right, Very I will be in touch you. with all of you. I'll be sending you an email as soon as the webinar is over. You are very, very, very lucky people. All right, so uh, really quick before we do a close with Madeline, I just want to give you two announcements about what else is going on at Office Dynamics. You know, we're here for you. We're a great resource for you. Um, starting in September, I think it's right after Labor Day, I'm going to be teaching our Star Achievement Series 
uh, flagship training program, second generation. So it's been completely uh, updated for the new generation of our workplace. So if you want to check that out at officedynamics.com, you can do that and you can earn a professional designation, the SEEP Certified Executive Administrator Professional Designation. And then we have our 30th year annual conference here in Las Vegas. And oh my gosh, the seats are flying off and I'm not joking. Uh, today we hit our 300 mark. Um, so we're already way ahead of the game uh, for what we anticipate for this year. And the hotel rooms are pretty getting pretty booked up, um, almost all booked up. So if you want to go, you better come and you better sign up and you better get your hotel room <laughs> blocked at the beautiful Red Rock Resort. Uh, it's going to be phenomenal. So again, and for that, you can go to officedynamicsconference.com to learn more. All right, Madeline, thank you, thank you, thank you. This was so much fun with you and love you and love all the great content um, and your knowledge is very, very valuable. So I appreciate your time today. And I've had so much fun doing with this with you. We're going to have to do another one. Absolutely. <laughs> maybe, absolutely. We'll, or maybe we'll kick off the new year. <laughs> the new year. On the new year. Excellent. Have a great week, everyone. And don't forget to create, cultivate, and activate your career dreams. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for attending today.